In this video, I will discuss about I2C protocol that is Inter-Integrated Circuit Protocol. This protocol consists of uh, two lines that is HDA and SCL. HDA stands for serial data and SCL stands for serial clock. And the, all the devices that are connected on to the bus is connected to these two lines. I2C is a synchronous protocol which means that all the devices that are connected onto the bus are shared, uh, sharing a common clock and this clock is generated by the master in I2C. And I2C is also a master slave protocol in which the master will uh, controls the communication and it generates the start and stop comments at the same time it sends queries to the slaves. And the slaves will uh, give the response to the master depending upon the query that is asked by the master. And I2C is also a bidirectional protocol in which so whenever the master is acting as an um, transmitter so it uses the SDA line and whenever the slave is acting as a the transmitter uh, that is it whenever it is uh, sending the response to the master query so it uses the same sda line so it's a bi-directional protocol so the i2c communication standard is the most widely used interchip communication standard in today's electronic systems so so many manufacturers ic manufacturers will um, have uh, this uh, i2c protocol feature in their ic's uh, that is uh, different ic's like e square from real time clocks adc's and dac's are using this i2c feature i2c protocol for communicating the data to the microprocessor or microcontroller each device uh, that is supporting the I2C protocol is having uh, two pins that is SDA and SCL pin and each pin is uh, having an open collector switch and it also at the receive buffer and whenever uh, the device is acting as a master so if you consider device 1 is the master in that case so the open collector switch that is connected to the SCL line will, will come into the picture and similarly if the device 2 is the slave in that case so the DC buffer that is connected to the serial clock will come into the picture and whenever the device 2 is sending the data in that case the open collector uh, switch that is connected to the SDA line of this device 2 that is slave will come into the picture in that case so the SDA line of the master is acting as an input so the receive buffer will come into the picture of the SDA line I2C bus is a, a serial interface that is consists of uh, SCL and SDA line which are already discussed so and uh, these lines are connected to the VCC through the pull-up resistor and the size of this pull-up resistor is determined the amount of the capacitance uh, on these I2C lines which we will come discuss in the coming slides. Each slave device is connected to the bus must be identified by the unique address and this address is um, given by the manufacturer, IC manufacturer. The device that initiates and completes the bus transfer and generates the clock that is a CL on the I2C bus is the master device. It is a open drain or open collector communication standard which implies that integrated circuits with different supply voltages can be connected uh, for the communication. And another advantage of this open collector is that can all the devices can be connected uh, in a wide end fashion. What is the advantage of wide end is? So if any here we can see if these four devices that is input 0 to input 3 are connected. So if any of these input is uh, low the output is low. If all the outputs that is attached to the line are in high impedance state, the pull-up resistor will hold the line in a logic 1 state. And if one or more devices uh, outputs are in logic 0 state, so they will sink current and it pulls the line to the ground. Here we can see, so whenever this that is uh, open collector switch is off, in that case the line is uh, driven high and whenever the open collector switch is uh, driven low, so it will sink current and uh, the output is low. If no pull-up resistor were used, the line would float to an unknown state. That's why the pull-up resistor is compulsory for open collector uh, uh, bus. So normally, and uh, sorry, one of the important uh, feature which you have to know is uh, clock stretching. So normally the master device controls the clock line that is a CL. Other devices that is slaves can only manipulate this line. That is they can only force this line low. This is known as clock stretching. By forcing the line low, it is impossible to clock more data onto the bus. What is uh, and how when this clock stretching is used in situations where an I2C slave is not able to cooperate with the clock speed that is given by the master. In that case, so for a slowing down the clock speed, so this clock stretching is done by the slaves. So this we already discussed. So the each uh, device is having uh, ISD and SCL. Uh, 
pins and each pin is having an open collector switch and down switch is having a receive buffer and depending upon whether it is acting as a transmitter and a receiver so this pin will these pins will act accordingly transmitter is a device that sends data onto the bus a transmitter can either be a device that push data onto the bus of its own cord that is a master transmitter or uh, in response to the master so the uh, slaves will also act as a, a transmitters receiver is the device that receives the data from the bus and we have already discussed master is the device onto the on the ic bus that uh, generates the serial clock and also it controls the bus and it generates the start and stop conditions Slave is the device that is addressed by the master. A slave can be either receiver or transmitter. Multi-master. I2C supports multi-master bus. The ability of more than one master to coexist on the bus at the same time without collision or data loss. Whenever bus is not busy, so it is uh, driven high through the pull-up resistor. Start uh, data transfer. So this is initiated by the master. So how this is generated? So a change in the state of the data line that is STLN from high to low. Here you can see in this uh, uh, diagram. You can see while the clock is high, defense start condition. And so what is stop uh, condition? A change in the state of the data line from low to high. So while while the clock line is high, defense the stop condition. And this start and stop conditions is generated by the master. So how data tra is transferred? So data transfer can be initiated only when the bus is not busy. That during data transfer, the data line must remain uh, stable whenever clock line is high. This is against to the control lines that is stop and start conditions. In that case, the data line will go from low to high or low uh, high to low depending upon whether it is start and stop or command. Whereas for uh, data transfer, the data line should be remain uh, stable during uh, the clock high. So here we can see so whether it is a master or slave so whether it is in a STA pin or a CL pin so whenever that pin is acting as an output so the uh, switch will uh, open collector uh, switch will come into the picture here if we can see so whenever it is uh, on so the that pin is driven low and similarly whenever the same pin is acting as an input so the input buffer will come into the picture. So these are the specifications of this I2C bus. So maximum distance that is limited uh, by the bit rate and bit cap bus capacitance are usually less than 2 meters. Number of devices that are connected to the uh, bus is limited by the maximum bus capacitance that is defined in the I2C bus standard that is 400 picofarad. I2C bus is having three modes of operation, standard uh, mode which supports uh, 100 kbps and, uh, and 7 bit addressing it, it will support and fast mode is uh, supports 400 kbps and 10 bit addressing and high speed mode is having a data transfer of up to 3.4 uh, mbps. It is having an automatic uh, baud rate adjustment unlike if you see RS232 which is having a fixed baud rate here depending upon the requirement the clock speed can be varied so which will cause the automatic baud rate adjustment and it is also a multi master um, bus so so means which multiple masters can be connected on the bus so these are the electrical specifications of this i2c bus so uh, capacitance load per bus is 400 picofarad and rise time is 1 microfarad at 100 kilohertz this is for standard mode and 300 nanosecond at 400 kilohertz this is for uh, fast mode that is 400 kbps and pull up current at 4.4 volts is 3 milliamperes as per the standard and uh, VIL that is input logic low threshold is 0.3 VDD and this is 1.5 volts uh, for uh, 5 volts VCC and VIH input that is input logic high threshold is 0.7 VDD and VOL that is output logic low threshold is 0 0.4 volts maximum and this standard will not define VOH that is output logic high threshold. So I2C specifies the input voltage for logic low that is should be 0.3 VCC and the logic high should be 0 0.7 VCC. The standard specifies that the output voltage for logic low that is VOL should be between 0 to 0 0.4 volts. The standard does not specify the output uh, voltage levels for logic high that is VOH. If VCC is equal to 5 volts, VIL equal to 1.5 volts and VIH equal to 3.5 volts. So if you want to determine the pull-up resistor value that is connected uh, to the bus, we have to analyze this uh, circuit. If um, So the 
pull up resistance and the bus capacitance of this side to see bus can be approximated this and rc circuit so if you apply a laplace sorry if you apply a kvl to this so vc is equal to ie into r plus 1 by c into integral of i dt this is the voltage across the capacitor and if you apply a laplace transform so this is a vcc so with the step input and vcc is the amplitude of the step input in that case so for step input the laplace transform is 1 by s that is vcc by, by s equal to i into r plus 1 by s into integral of i s so, so for integral of i t the laplace transform is 1 by s so if you derive i of s equal to vcc by r into s plus 1 by rc and if you take inverse last plus transform for this so for inverse last transform uh, i of t equal to vcc by r into e power minus t by rc so the voltage across capacitor is vc equal to 1 by c in the integral of 0 to i of t dt if we apply this and finally we will get voltage across the capacitor vc equal to vcc into 1 minus e power minus t by rc So this is the pulse of uh, this I2C protocol. So VIL and uh, VH we can calculate by using this voltage across the capacitor equation. So VH equal to VCC into 1 minus E power minus T1 by RP into CB which is equal to 0.7 VCC and similarly VIL and if you derive both t1 and t2 we will get uh, this um, values and the rise time is the difference between this t1 minus t2 finally we will get 0.843 into rp that is pull up resistance value into bus capacitance cb the maximum pull up resistance is a function of this maximum rise time so rp maximum equal to tr that is rise time by 0.843 cb so rise time for this uh, standard mode is uh, 1 microsecond and cb is 400 picofarad so the accordingly you have to calculate the maximum resistance if you increase more resistance than this rp maximum so this will affect the rise time of your uh, pulses and similarly the minimum resistance uh, uh, value prevents the i2c pin from being drive to low so if you connect a resistance below this rp minimum so this uh, value prevents the i2c pin from being drive to low so it will always remain high and this voil value level that can be read as valid logic low by the input buffers of an ic this determines the minimum pull up resistor rp minimum equal to vcc minus ioil maximum by ioil this ioil is the short circuit um, sorry um, pull down current that is defined by the standard which is of 3 milli ampere so whenever you open collector switch is driven uh, low so 3 milli ampere maximum 3 milli ampere can flow into this and also maximum of uh, uh, 0.4 volts can be developed across uh, this switch uh, source and ground ideally should be zero but uh, uh, maximum allowable is 0.4 volts so we have to consider the um, maximum that is vcc minus vol maximum by iol which is iol is 3 milli ampere for this i2c standard so here you can see the example for more fast mode i2c communication with the following parameter calculate the pull up resistor value so the bus capacitance for this is 200 picofarad um, and vcc is 3.3 .3 volts so you can calculate the rp maximum so uh, rise time for this uh, fast mode is uh, 300 uh, nanosecond you can see from the down chart and CB is the bus capacitance for uh, this uh, existing bus that is 200 picofarad. We can get we are getting 1.77 kilo ohms. And similarly, RP minimum that is pull up resistance value minimum equal to VCC minus VOL into maximum value of VOL that is 0.4 volts. And uh, IOL is uh, as per this I2C standard is 3 milliampere. We are getting around 966.6 ohms. We can calculate RP maximum that is pull up resistance maximum and minimum should not be um, that is pull up resistance should, well, should not be above this uh, RP maximum and should not be below minimum uh, RP minimum if it is more than RP maximum it will affect your uh, uh, rise time of your pulses and at the same time if you are connecting resistance well below RP minimum it will uh, makes this pin uh, always remain high it will not allow to the allow the pin to become low 
here we can see this is the response and query between the master and slave device in the i2c here the slave uh, sorry the s yes is the start command you can see in the down uh, figure so then in, uh, followed by a seven bit address of the slave this is the uh, giving this this is generated by the master and then whether read or write so zero represents write so we are writing this to the slave then word address means what are the address to be read then it is followed by that and a is the acknowledgement that is received from the slave by the master so at the end uh, this p is the stop which is uh, generated by the master here you can see data write that is slave receiver mode so uh, this uh, communication is started by the master and then it is uh, sending the slave address whether read or write that is read we are sending the read uh, we are uh, writing the address that is from where the data is to be sent by the slave and then followed by the acknowledgement from the um, slave then it is uh, uh, followed by a stop uh, command which is generated by the master and depending upon this uh, query so the slave will uh, send the data means slave is acting as a transmitter in this case so for this purpose also the start command is to be generated by the master and also the address will be given by the master in that case the master is in read condition means it is receiving data then it has to send one so after that so slave is giving an acknowledgement means it is received data and then continuously transmit the data so whenever the master is sufficient with the data then it will generates a no, not acknowledgement then the slave will stop the data and then the master has to generate uh, the stop command p bus arbitration is a multi master bus sorry i2c is a multi master bus so more than one master can be present on the bus and more than one master may try to initiate data transfer at the same time so how this is done by using a bus arbitration a master can continue transaction only if the bus is free the built in arbitration feature which is based on the wide end structure of the bus line resolves competition between the masters and enables only one master to continue the transaction and other to withdraw from the bus because um, the device that is master which is sending the logic load will uh, wins the arbitration and uh, will uh, gains the bus and the other uh, master will detect this and it will withdraw from uh, the data transfer during the transfer the master continuously monitors the sd and scl line if one of them detects that sdl line is low whenever it should actually be high means if it is sending high but even though bus is low means some other um, device is accessing the bus then it assumes that another master is active and immediately stops its transfer this speech processor is known as bus arbitration here we can see that master 1 and master 2 are two are sending the data we can see up to this um, red um, arrow indication so both are uh, trans accessing the bus so whenever the master e1 is uh, transmitting zero so then ma the bus will be driven uh, low then the master 2 will uh, observe this and it will stop uh, accessing the bus and the master 1 will continue uh, in accessing the bus thank you for watching my video